Hello and welcome to the Conscious Consulting Podcast, where we will introduce you to the Conscious Consulting philosophy. Together with our senior advisors from all around the world, we blend the deep knowing of wisdom traditions, technology, modern science and business, and show you how to transform this wisdom into impact in your daily life as a consultant, leader or entrepreneur. Welcome to the CCG community. In our very first episode, we will dive deep into the fundamentals of conscious consulting. For this episode, there will be our two founders of the Conscious Consulting Group joining me for a thrilling conversation about the fundamentals of conscious consulting. We will dive deep into what is conscious consulting about and why it is so necessary for today's world. Why it's time for a new level of consciousness, what it needs to be created and the key to access wisdom. Julia and Christian also share insights about the team, the structure and the exclusive offers of the Conscious Consulting Group behind this podcast. So make yourself a cup of tea, take a deep breath and enjoy this first episode of the Conscious Consulting Podcast. So Christian, Julia, I'm so happy to record the very first episode of the Conscious Consulting Podcast with you today. I'm so glad I'm here. Thank you for your time. Pleasure. Most welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so together we will dive deeper into consultancy, into conscious consulting. Um, but let's start with the fundamental question. What is conscious consulting? Conscious consulting is a, a consulting approach or maybe even a philosophy or even a field of consulting that focuses on the development of consciousness in leaders in business. I think that's probably needs some explanation, but to put it in a nutshell, this is what we're focusing at. So we're not so much focused on task oriented consulting or on what people are doing so much but who they are, their state of consciousness, their capacity to be aware of what's going on within them and outside them, to connect with themselves, with their colleagues, with the organization, with the world, and to develop maybe a new also state of consciousness. And to go there a bit deeper, why is consciousness so important? Because this is where everything starts in our consciousness. This is the source. Modern science tells us that consciousness is the foundation even of matter. Everything appears in consciousness. And consciousness is actually that of which everything we experience is made of. So if this is the case, and now as Julia said, modern science even points their light to the same direction as well, uh, is then we actually are the creator of that, what is going on. What we witness in our world and is, and then if you match over to consulting, uh, which is focusing on this relative, relevant aspect of society is called economy and business. And we see what impact business and economy has on, on our world as a whole then this is the core for us to, to look at and to, I, to, to investigate what kind of consciousness does it need to overcome that state of emergency we are right in. Right now, our state of consciousness is very much focused on looking at technology, also on exploitation, on efficiency, digitalization, and also a sense of separation. And this reflects the way we do business, we understand economics, we lead organizations, and we develop them. Right now, we see that we are hitting a wall with the way that we act. And we see that just trying to change the way how we do things and what we are doing and what we are creating is not so effective because we don't really go back to the source where it all is created. And this is consciousness. 
And this is why we believe basing a consulting approach on the development, on the exploration and expansion and development of consciousness could truly make a difference right now. What do you think is the main reason why people don't make the work to raise their awareness? Why are we stuck in this level of consciousness for the past 100, 200 years? Well, I think uh, for a long time it served as well. We didn't have, really didn't have huge problems that forced us to deepen our awareness. Actually, we are also, our brain is lazy. It, will, it doesn't want to change. It doesn't want to question habits. So as long as the world functions for us, we just continue. We, we know it, I think, from our personal lives. Many people say, including myself, we didn't really change until we really had a crash, a relationship breakdown, a, a health breakdown. So we really functional breakdowns. And breakdowns are often an invitation to look a little bit deeper. So, oh, what's going on? Uh, why is this happening? What does it tell me? And I think we as human beings, somehow the world worked fine for us. So we had an increase in, in wealth and in life standards. And for some people, uh, it really turned out well. And actually people of power and who have uh, accumulated a lot of uh, money are really not interested in changing the status quo because it really works very well for them. But now uh, the situation is changing. It's shifting. It's even becoming threatening to the very rich and privileged people like we are right now. So the combination of coronavirus, of, uh, of what we all feel climate change happening right now, economic turmoil happening right now, health issues that we're having even in the Western world, a lot of like mental problems like depression and suicide is increasing. Loss of control. Um, the loss of control. Also a, a huge overpopulation like... Uh, Like we have uh, struggled for resources, water um, supplies are, are, are diminishing in the world. So there are a lot of things like right now coming together, a younger generation saying, okay, where's my future? Um, if we don't change anything, there is no earth anymore for us. So it's, it's a highly threatening situation right now where we are crashing. Some are already uh, sensing it. And I think... This is the reason why we even have this conversation and why we even think we need to do things differently. Uh, and so for me, this situation or this um, uh, place where we are as human is a real invitation. It's, it's like a breakdown, a collective breakdown, and it's an invitation to look deeper and to again, Let's say develop further our state of consciousness to more complexity to a higher level. Yeah. So, and this is where conscious consulting comes into play. Absolutely. You know, when we see at how people get sick, how they are burnt out, and how the speed of exploitation is getting faster and faster, we see that consulting also has a major role in that, in actually enhancing and stabilizing and supporting that process. So consulting has for us become part of the problem because it is a partner in, in that crime. In, in that I would say yeah, probably we could really say it dramatically in a crime of destruction. Based on old mental models of exploitation, of infinite growth in a finite world. This is a match that never will, will play equal. It's just, and everybody knows that, you know, that we are based on wrong models so that we don't take uh, society, women, uh, ecology, ecology into as part of the equation. Because at that time when those mental models were constructed, they didn't play a role. We thought 200 years ago, the world is here to be exploited and it's endless. Women had no voice. They didn't have even a legal status. So, but still, this is the, the fundamentals of the mental models are there. So it's not about polishing the surface anymore. We're kind of rearranging the deck chairs on a Titanic, which already has hit the iceberg. And this we think we have to go deeper. We have to go to the source of it. 
time for a new level of consciousness. Yeah, but how do you do that? How do you raise the awareness and the level of consciousness in maybe an hour of consultancy? How does it work? <laughs> Good question. Slowly in the beginning, very slow in the beginning, I would say. Uh, usually we, we as consultants, we have to understand the situation of our clients. We are, and the, bet, the faster, the better. And the quicker, the even more and much better. And uh, to give an example, Julia is a master in, in questioning uh, our clients. Much, even more, much more than I am, uh, to be honest. And for instance, she questions the idea of being successful. She just dares to raise the question, why? What for do you want to be successful? You know, this is, this is an unheard of question in a boardroom. Unheard of question in the relationship between a consultant and the, and the client because it's all about you being successful. So, but for the first time, allowing you to, wow, what am I here for? Why do I want to be successful? What is it all about? This creates a precious moment for a client to see, hey, what are my, my underlying intentions and assumptions? Because all of that is, is fed by expectations of my owners, of my peers, of my family, maybe of myself. Uh, and to question those beginning there, because you are the source of it. And then a new story can form. If we work on a level of consciousness, there are three qualities essential. One is to go slower, to go deeper, and to go wider. And this is the space that we are creating. A safe space where you can go very slow and say, wait, wait, wait. Question everything. Speak even slower, because this gives space to new thoughts to arise. And and go deeper. So we, we like this way of um, slow conversations. So this is one of our key technique to take out the speed and the stress. And this is very, very spacious. So that's, that's, that's extremely important. To go deeper, to go beyond the questions. This is what we're referring to when we question everything. We dare to question everything. You want to be successful, great. Why? What does mean the success mean to you? for you? Very basic questions that are most of the time have no answers. And, and then you go a little bit deeper, 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 beyond, 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 until you come to a point of insight. Oh, something becomes clear to people. This is always a transformative moment. And the third one is to go wider, to look at problems from different perspectives that might not even be relevant. Like, how would it look from from the universe, from quantum physics? What would the biologist say about this? And how can we go also beyond this very moment, not only uh, in space, but also in time? So to widen the space and to widen the time horizon in the back and in the future. And this needs a lot of presence. I would say this is really at the core of how we work. And it looks so not spectacular from the outside, but it's so, as we say, unlearned and unpracticed. Uh, meditation might be one tool and aspect that we use, but we don't need to sit in silence to go to this point. And I think the key difference is not only what we do, but who we are, our state of consciousness, our presence that we bring to the moment. And whom we allow our client to be yeah. in that moment. Yeah. Often for the first time. Wow, there is space. Yeah. And this is an amazing experience for people. Exactly after a couple of hours and when so much is done, although it was so slow and so wide. So the presence in us evokes the presence in others. And presence is the key to access wisdom. And this is where everything forms and unfolds. And the techniques can be uh, asking questions or telling stories, giving little teachings, doing constellation work, a lot of techniques that we have from other, from our consultancy, like mainstream consulting trainings. But this going slow, 
in the end is so much more effective. You, you then at the end you speed up and you come up with something that goes beyond what they ever expected. And it helps them to be very effective in the day to day work, to be more present with the people they work with, to be more credible, to uh, create a sense of trust. And joy. To and be joy in people and to be really an inspiring leader. This needs work on a level of consciousness. This does not need a model of uh, leadership or positive leadership or some buzzwords out there. It's the key is really the, I think this is going slow with presence. What we're doing is the most basic, simple human practices that we could imagine. It It's so, actually, so, our approach is so easy. It's so simple that it's almost difficult to say how simple it is because people say, okay, what is this? This is nothing. It's so simple. But this no, is doing. this is the magic in it, that everybody can do it, that we have it. We have it cultivated in us. We just have forgotten it. We just bring back knowledge that is there from thousands of years. I think this is the simplest consulting approach you could ever imagine. So you said it now a little bit, what you do differently in conscious consulting than in traditional consulting, but what are the, the main differences of this approach? I just would like to give you an example. I think a very example that shows it very good. What is the difference? There's one concept in, in Buddhism that's called beginner's mind. It means that you come from a place of honestly, openly, I would say a skillful not knowing because one of the problems why there's not real innovation is that we always already know so many things or think we know everything and the future is predetermined by the past by our experiences and learning how to come from a place of skillful not knowing allows for new ideas to truly emerge. And that means that when our clients come with a certain question, for example, we need empowerment, we truly come from a place that we say, we have no idea what that means for you, but let's find out together. And then they can say, you know what, we don't know either. And then we start from a place where we don't know together what it is, and we start a shared, I would say, journey of exploration. And, and this really makes a true difference. We, we don't pretend we know it. We don't come up with the model and these are the three steps and this is how we get there. So this is just one example. So what we're doing, we're applying wisdom that has been around for thousands of years into today's real life challenges, experiences, questions. And we found them to be so much more useful, so powerful and so different from what usually is offered by consulting. And I would also say it's more than a pure coaching approach where you basically work with questions. We have a certain lens, a certain perspective that we're using, and we use them very consciously. And if I can step in here, because Julia mentioned it, this moment where we truly share our not knowing in a qualified way is an incredibly powerful place. And the interesting aspect is this is what our clients, then they sense that, wow, this is a completely new way of looking, giving them an allowance also not to know. Because usually everyone expects from them to know in order to lead. But what if it's uh, what if it's possible that there is a safe space where you can be quali a qualified not knower, mm -hmm. and this is the beginning of the quest, and where you can where we have access to all our resources, but not in in the way we are used to in terms of coming up with the answers in, the, in immediately, and then starting to sense that, and this is uh, what comes into play that we go far beyond intellectual capacities it gives them an allowance to see how it feels to not know to to sense oh my colleagues they, they share the same experience they don't know either wow this is this is a breakthrough for many boardrooms you know when all of a sudden there is this deep knowing in place and oh we don't know it all together a yeah. powerful place to start from 
And I think this is only one example. I think the, really the key difference is that we are informed by different concepts, by, as we say, wisdom traditions, science, of course, our own experience, and that we openly share it. And that truly makes a difference in the way we are working. And it's uh, maybe sometimes unconventional or un, un, I'd say tested so much, but our way is to bring back wisdom and knowing and seeing from different perspectives into the field of business. This is what we're really after. There is this, uh, this wonderful saying, uh, old ways won't open new doors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by admitting that you come from a place I don't know, then it's comf uncomfortable at first, but also absolutely freeing. Freeing, exactly. And many models that we suggest are counterintuitive. For example, there is this concept from Taoism, the non-doing. And, and this is totally the opposite of what is expected normally from leaders and from consultants. We are normally paid for doing things and no, you don't. Uh, uh, working there and facilitating workshops and coming up with concepts and doing PowerPoints. And also leaders think they are expected to always do something, although they don't even know what they do, just doing things. and Just being protective. Yeah. And, and talking about what non-doing means today maybe sometimes that's the best thing you can do in a moment is to just look and there there we work with a concept that's called uh, gentle action and gentle action means that the more complex a situation is and the more difficult the more volatile the less you're doing in the beginning so you all you do in the beginning is looking observing Sensing. This is what we do in our consulting approach. And this is what we advise and support our clients to do is to take the courage to not act. For example, that that's another example, I would say. And this is then coming up and doing very little, doing less. So our work is very delicate, very slow sometimes, very little. So, but, but consciousness needs a way of approaching it carefully. You cannot just go and say, let's change it. it. It's a soft, very gentle form of working with our client. And it is so much more powerful, I think. In the end. And there is this moment, of course, in a certain time of the process where it's about going out there and doing things and deciding and taking steps forward or in whatever direction. But what, what we're just talking about, you actually could see it as usually when you meet our clients, everybody is out there with their minds and attention. It's always out there. And the whole education and training and track record shows they are so successful being out there and it's the solutions and looking for the answers out there. So what we do actually is we, we retract that energy, which is dispersed everywhere out, but the only place where it is not is in here, right where they are at the center of it. So we take back the whole energy and say, wow, what if this is the only place in time and space where we have real access to and kind of control of is where we are right now, what is our state of being, who are we in this situation? And if that happens and if this is succeeds, then all of a sudden, We become the source. They become the source of their doing, which is not out there. Their doing then will show up there. But the source of that doing is here. And this is where they have access all of a sudden. So it's super interesting. There's so many things that we are absolutely not familiar with in our um, yeah, modern economy um, and the business world. And um, you mentioned it already that you're looking in totally different fields, like wisdom, tradition, and science. What fields does uh, conscious consulting include? Right now in our research on the question, what it is consciousness, we found an intersect of basically quantum physics, modern medicine, biology, 
also a lot of people researching into the question of energy and energy fields. Somebody would say it's parascience, but we think it's very essential to look again at our reality from different perspectives. So there is the field of modern science and everything that entails it. Then there is the field of uh, philosophy, also Western philosophy, of course, uh, that tells us a lot. Uh, right now we talked about Montaigne to our clients with his very interesting approach to life and to also non-doing. There's a lot of Taoism inside. Then, of course, a lot of uh, Western, um, Eastern traditions, uh, wisdom traditions, especially Zen Buddhism, because this is the lineage where Christian is ordained in as monk, and he studied also Tibetan Buddhism for a long time. Um, also Indian traditions, of course. So this all comes together. And uh, we are actually interested in the intersect of all of these disciplines. So looking at the same questions from what has biology and neuroscience have to say about consciousness, or what does Zen Buddhism have to say about it? And we see there are a lot of conversations now going on in this interdisciplinary field. And the interesting thing is they all come up to the same conclusions from wherever they come from, which is there is no separation. There are different objects. We are different as humans and different from animals, but ultimately nothing exists independently and there is no separation. So this is the conclusion that we learn from all traditions right now, be it all traditions or be it modern science. And we a little bit cherry pick. We look at what can we learn from them and how does it help to get a new understanding of the world we live in? Because this is also what creates new possibilities. If we always look at the world through the same angle, through the same glasses, through the same filters, we will always see the same world. And these different disciplines help us to see the world differently and to also find new options and this is really at the core and yeah raising the awareness and the new level of consciousness is the first step but real magic happens when you transform this wisdom into impact what does this mean for you transforming wisdom into impact is to bring wisdom to the place where it can make a difference and this is where we manifest where thing where decisions are made where the world is created and we see this is very much a business maybe politics people who are leading organizations and we see there's a lot of wisdom out there but it mostly lives in the woods it's it lives separate from where it really could make a difference. So our idea is to bring it in a way that it's relevant, that it's usable, that it's practical to the place and to the situations where it is truly needed and where we feel there's a lot of lack of uh, wisdom, be it a personal wisdom of people who have an innate wisdom or be it a universal wisdom that we have accumulated over thousands of years. It stays somewhere in the woods, maybe in monasteries or in, within scientists. But what we see is we need that intersect. We need these things to come together. We need these different fields or layers to merge and come together. And then the transformative part happens when it comes together and then it creates an impact. So how, how would that be applied into the daily business world. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of this reality in organizations called silos. Yeah, we have uh, departments A and B and C and D, and which is an expression of separation. Uh, I do marketing and they do sales and we produce it and they deliver it and blah, 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 more of the same. So we have a classical idea of separation. So the, the cake is cut in pieces. And every single piece of the cake does its best to be a beautiful piece of cake, deliciously tasting and looking and whatever, uh, pretend to be a cake in itself, a piece of cake being it, its its own nature. 
and not being an expression of the same body of the cake with a certain task. So now what happens, because companies realize we have a problem, because the silos and go up and they go down and go up and no short communication, etc. So then we said, okay, we are separate, therefore we have to overcome this separation. Therefore we have to, and re remember, the separation is an illusion. In the first, in the beginning, there never was such thing as a separation. It's an invention already. And now we invent a new solution called the bridge. So we build bridges between part of the organizations. There has never been a gap, actually. The gap in the, in the beginning was already creation. So in looking at that uh, obstacle by obstacle by obstacle and bring a solution for something which never has been a problem in the beginning because it was a sheer invention, it never was real, but we related to it until it became real. It became as, as if we relate to a certain set of, of ideas long enough, then you think this is reality. So therefore we, we are not building here to, or CCG is not here to build the new and better bridge. But to question the idea of bridging and the gap prior to it. What if we never had been separated? What would then be possible between marketing and sales and whatever? It has an impact how we relate to the, our mind realities. What came to my mind when you told me that is uh, a forest. When you walk into the forest, it's visible to you that every tree is on its own. It's separated. There is distance between. But when you go deeper, what you don't see under the surface, that all the roots are connected and they share soil and they share water. And information. And yes, yes. And what you do to the one tree or to the one root affects the other one. And yeah, and so maybe we have to make it visible sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful yeah. spoken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I love the the wood and tree. I think it it's really perfectly describes that we experience as a separate trees and not a part of a wood. Mm -hmm. The good thing is actually in also already in modern biology we can see that shift. Uh, so it shifted from looking at the tree to the forest and seeing the the single tree as a fractal of the body of the forest. But the real phenomena is the, the being of the forest more than the being of the single tree. And this is a completely different approach all of a sudden. And for me, knowing a little bit more about quantum physics, I cannot say that I know really anything about it, but just the notion that every particle is part of the field going through the whole universe. And we, our physical body is like an intersect of fields, of energy fields. Just is so mind blowing. And it, for me, changes everything. How I experience the world, how I look at organization. It looks like it has nothing to do with each other and it never gets any relevance. But once you, you start to think about it, and also sense it and look at it and just try the thought out because if we cannot really prove it we don't know but we just try out the thought what if this was the case what if this was true what would this mean for me what would be the implication in the way how I relate to the world out there it wouldn't be a world out there in separation to myself I would be an inherent part of everything what is and this leads to a different we would say different awareness a different level of consciousness that very naturally informs how I look at the world and what I'm doing and and this is what we offer our clients this is an interesting uh, moment for me in in the process with clients, because what we usually see that the executives in on board level, on C level, feel very separated from their organizations. There is kind of, and it's always drawn and pictured like that, the top of the, of the pyramid. And reality is, if you go in corporations, the boardrooms are separate from the re separated most of the times from the rest of the organization, and it really feels like, and they relate from that reality to the organization, from very top to down, from, so, and even the, they have different layers in, in the buildings, etc. 
But when you, what changes uh, with our idea is, as we put them right in the center and not on the top, so all of a sudden they are the, the DNA of the body and not the, the I don't know, the, the brains. Or the head. Or the, the head. Or the heart, maybe. <laughs> But we put them right to the heart center of the organization. And this is a completely different place from where you look and act regarding your organizational body. If you're from here, from top, or from the tummy, heart center of, of the body. It's beautiful. It's such a different approach. So what is your intention with the Conscious Consulting Group? Our intention is to, one thing is to create a new approach to consulting, obviously, that uses a different language, that uses a different mind and heart set, that uses uh, different philosophies and teachers in the background, actually, to bring forth a new consciousness in leaders and in business. For us, leaders are our access to business, to economy, also to a manifestation in the world. And obviously, it's not... The purpose is not so much to create a new consulting company. There are so many consulting companies out there anyway. But to raise the awareness of a world that's prosperous, that's beneficial, that comes from a place of connection. And as Christian said before, to create a you and me world, to get out of this idea that we're living in a hostile world that's for us here to exploit. So ultimately, it is about bringing forth maybe a new or different world, ultimately, even if it's only on a very small scale. But we see that consulting has potentially a huge lever and a huge influence because many consultants act as influencers and work with very influential people. So this bringing this together, wisdom, teachers, conscious consultants, leaders, maybe even conscious leaders, and cultivate a new field that is part of a solution and the world that is right now emerging in a new consciousness. Basically, that's our intention, to help bring forward something that we see wants to be brought forward, which is a new level of consciousness, a different way of living, of working, of, of being, of sensing, of being aware and of doing business, ultimately. I deeply believe that economy and doing business is a major, massive powerhouse of human society and you, therefore human development. So we cannot uh, blame it. It doesn't make sense. It's a, it's a massive expression of our forces and energies and desires to create a world that works for everyone. And, but to do that, we have to shift gears. We have to readjust our mental models. Because what we really can see very clearly, and we are not alone with that, we are in good company, we are hitting that wall. For consultants, I see consultants as a very noble tribe in societies. So the potentiality of consulting and advising is massive. It always has been there, different names in history, but there always was the role of advisors there. And to give back that dignity and to enhance that role and to foster that role is definitely one of a, a key intention of mine uh, within Conscious Consulting. To be these advi that advisor uh, to show different ways forward through the unknown. This is what we are here for. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. So you mentioned already that uh, you have people you're putting together into the CCG. Um, how do you build up the CCG, the Conscious Consulting Group? That's actually the best part. You know, it's, <laughs> um, many of them are, have been former teachers, became friends, and we are teachers to each, each other. And they are, for me, they are iconic, many of them, in, in their own path of life. 
Each of the members represents a different field of expertise and training, but all of them also come from, from a world of business, of hands-on doing and consulting leaders or have their own experience in leadership. So, so this is what we're looking for, people who have already been able to merge within themselves different fields and disciplines. So we have a world-class quantum physicist, we have an, a teacher in, or it's a researcher in holism, expert in holism. We have a Zen priest. We have uh, Yang, she was a high-level manager in LinkedIn and lived in the monastery at the same time. And now she's also teaching and consulting and leading, guiding Silicon Valley leaders. So she's also part of our network. We have people who work with young leaders, who work with startups, who are experts, maybe in marketing, even digital marketing, but have a very long practice of meditation and, and Zen and philosophy within themselves and consolidated and uh, climate them. experts and, and economists, people who are uh, do research in Buddhist economics and think about how can new models look like. And uh, there's Christian, of course, he's been, as we said, uh, for 30, 40 years researching into what Eastern traditions, Buddhism, uh, but also all kinds of philosophies and working as a consultant. So they, they come from different walks of lives, but we all share the same intention and the same purpose. So in our work in different forms, we are offering and are supporting a new level of consciousness to arise, to cultivate it in us, between us, and then to package it and offer it to the world of business where people don't have the time or the possibilities to go for long journeys of uh, of uh, retreats and studying and so on. And it has three main pillars. One is the consultancy practice. We work with clients, leaders out there offering consulting services in our form. Then we have the academy. This is where we offer education programs specifically targeted at consultants who want to cultivate in them uh, conscious consulting and the third part is the community part it's very important that you when you learn and develop to have a safe space a group of like-minded people who share interests it's interesting listening to you it reminds me to the to the basic structure and nature of of how monasteries are built for thousands of years there was always this in any tradition actually Uh, be, it Chris, be it Christian or Buddhism or Hinduism, actually that there was this study part, this like academy studying the teachings, uh, re doing research in what it means to be a human being, then practicing it together as a community. It always is, you cannot do it alone. You have to do it with other people. And the third is the economic part to how to bring it out into the world and how to live from it. So this was, this three step process is, is always there. So actually it remains, reminds me to a very mundane, uh, mm -hmm. interpretation of a, of a monastery, actually. Yeah, because we're not, uh, only working with spiritual traditions. No. It's only one part. It's one tradition mm -hmm. or one. Mm -hmm. I love that. A branch of modern of monastery. Yeah. <laughs> <really> nice. Secular. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and if listeners say now, oh, that's so great, I want to be a part of it, either as a consultant or as a member of the community, how can you engage or participate with the Conscious Consulting Group? There are different ways. As a client, you can come and ask us uh, for advisory. And for consultants, we think the best form to engage with us is to be part of our academy offerings. So the, 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 the first way is now we are actually launching an introductionary program to conscious consulting 
And we feel it would be best just to be participating in that and see who are the people, what are they talking about, to, of course, look at our blog that we are offering right now, listen to the podcast. This is only the first one in a series of podcasts with all our members. So you can see, is this something for me? Engage with us and then see what eventually emerges out of it. And then there are two uh, main tracks. One is to become over time part of our, I would say, core team as advisors and work under our brand. Or I would say simply participate, be part of our community that is based on the academy programs uh, over time and just use this group for your own practice, for your own personal development while you're doing whatever job you are doing out there. So everybody who is somehow uh, guiding, teaching, supporting, consulting other people could be interested in this approach. And you don't have to like become a conscious consultant or be an advisor in our group to be interested. So we think um, these are the main uh, ways for the moment. And we will create this community over time, start offering. So be there and, and show interest, be active. Yeah, thank you. There are many options now. And as I said already, we're just starting with the podcast. There will be so many more episodes with every senior advisor of the Conscious Consulting Group. Um, and I'm also very looking forward to the program. So, and um, a question I want to ask everyone on the Conscious Consulting Podcast. I think it's a really important question we all should ask ourselves and I'm happy to ask it to my interview guests. So from your perspective, what is the secret to a good life? For me, a secret to a good life is, is, is to give more than, than to take. It's like living from your heart, giving from your heart and, and not expecting so much from others or from the world and make yourself available. And, and this is very rewarding in the end. To me, a few aspects. Life is precious and it's not mine. It's given to me. And, and the longer I live, gratitude comes in. Deepest gratitude and awe, like about this moment here. You have fantastic support for us, you're doing whatever it is, whatever it is. Also, the seemingly not so pleasant thing, just gratitude for, oh, this is what I'm experiencing. This is the day, this is it. Deepest gratitude is fantastic. It's, it's miraculous. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. I'm also deeply grateful for this conversation. And yeah, and for now, I just, Thank you a lot for your time. We had a wonderful conversation as always, and I'm so looking forward to everything that's coming from the Conscious Consulting Group. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. That was great. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to this episode of the Conscious Consulting Podcast. If you want to dive deeper into the field of Conscious Consulting and become a part of our community, Visit our website ccg-group.eu and subscribe to our newsletter so we can stay connected. You will find all the links in the show notes. We look forward to having you on board. 